بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بذة وكل بذة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد So uh, last time we were on this uh, book or going through this book the three fundamental principles uh, before Ramadan we finished here as you can see the page and the ayah that we the Sheikh was explaining before we stopped at this page here page 100 and 11 he was going through the ayah let's pull it up we went through the tafsir of this ayah وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ لَا تَسْجُدُوا لِلشَّمْسِ وَلَا لِلْقَمْرِ وَاسْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُنَّ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ Surah Fusilat verse 37 so, so that's what we did last time this, that's what the Shaykh went through and we translated the tafsir of before Ramadan so now uh, the Shaykh moves on to the next he moves on to the next ayah and the ayah is in front of us on this page. He says, وَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى إِنَّ رَبَّكُمُ اللَّهُ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامِ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ يُكْشِ اللَّيْلَ النَّهَارَ يَطْلُبُهُ حَثِيثًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ وَالنُّجُومَ مُسَخَرَاتٍ بِأَمْرِهِ أَلَا لَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْأَمْرِ Tabarakallahu Rabbul Alameen Suratul Araf verse 54 So the Shaykh begins he says Falwajib Falwajibu an la na'bud an la na'bud illallah fa idha sajadtum lahu wa sajadtum li ghayri fa innakum la takunun abidin illahi li ibadat as-sahiha bal تَعْبُدُونَهُ مَعَ شِرْكِ وَالشِرْكِ يَفْسُدُ الْإِبَادَةِ أو يَفْسُدُ الْإِبَادَةِ So then the Shaykh says, so it's obligatory that we worship, that we only worship Allah. So that we worship Allah alone. Because if, he says, if you prostrate it to Him and then, and, and then you also prostrate to other than Him, for indeed, then that it, then you're not basically worshipping Allah correctly. You're not worshipping Allah correctly. Rather, you know, you are worshipping Him along with others. Ma shirk, with shirk. And then the Shaykh, as he said before, he says, and shirk, associating partners in worship with Allah, which is shirk, it corrupts your worship, it, corru it corrupts one's worship, it corrupts their worship. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, in, so he's in the, the Shaykh will explain, he's going to do the tafsir of this ayah, he's going to explain the ayah, the ayahs that we read, or the ayah 54 from Surah Al-Araf that we read just then. So he says, um, in, he says in, it says, Harf Tawqeed wa Nasab wa hiya mawti'atun lil qasam yaqdiru qablaha qasam taqdiruhu wa Allah. There's a bit of grammar here. So basically, the Shaykh, he says, in summary, as best as I can put it for you, he says it is a particle uh, of, um, uh, he says, Tawqeed emphasis. I'd say emphasis. It's a particle of emphasis. And it also points towards uh, oh, uh, Allah, the, the word. So it is in, in. And what comes after is pointing towards or is it's, it's connected to Allah. So indeed, Allah, indeed, your Lord in the ayah, inna rabbakum. Then the Shaykh says, inna rabbakum. He says, fahiya fi jawab qasim al-muqaddar. 
So basically the Shaykh says, and that's the answer to this Qasam, because in Arabic language you have a Qasam, then you have a Jawab al-Qasam. Um, it's quite difficult to explain really, anyway for myself, uh, but this is some grammar. And then the Shaykh says, Inna Rabbakum he says that, Inna Rabbakum, that is the Jawab, the, the answer to that Qasam that's made at the start of the Ayah. And then he says also, Inna Rabbakum, Ay, خَالَقَكُمْ وَمُرَبِّيكُمْ بِالنِّعَمْ And he means that in Rabbakum, he means by this that <coughs> was the answer or the jawab. It is that uh, Allah خَالِقُكُمْ uh, is your creator, the one who created you, the one who uh, provides for you with his blessings. Um, and then the shaykh says Allah, so from the ayah he says Allah, he breaks it down, he says, okay, what does Allah mean here? And he says, La ghayrahu subhanahu wa ta'ala, that there's no other deity other than him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, the ilah, al-ilah, Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the shaykh continues and he says, Thumma dhakar al-dalil ala thalika faqala, alladhi khalaqa al-samawati wal-ard, hadha huwa al-burhan ala rububiyyati Allah azza wa jal, أنه خلق السماوات والأرض ولا أحد ولا أحد خلق شيئا منهما ولا أحد أعانه سبحانه وتعالى على ذلك بل هو المنفرد بخلقه خلق السماوات والأرض هل أحد من المشركين أو, أو الملاحدة عارض هذا وقال أو عارض هذا وقال ما خلق الله السماوات والأرض الذي خلقها هو فلان أو أنا الذي خلق خلقتها أو خلقها الصنم الفلاني هل قال هذا أحد من العالم قديما وحديثا مع أن هذه الآية تطلع ليل ونهارا ولا أحد عارضها ولا يستطيع أن يعارضها أبدا. سيدنا الشيخ he says in that paragraph that we're reading we've just read there he says that then the the Shaykh he mentions the evidence and the evidence of what we what we've discussed so far is Allah the Khalaqa Samawati Wal Ard who created the one who created the, the heavens and the earth I Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Surah Al Araf verse fifty four which is the verse the Shaykh is explaining to us he says and then also then he goes on to say this is the evidence upon or the evidence of the Lordship of Allah, His Lordship, Azawajal, and that He created the heavens and the earth, and nobody else created a thing from them, or created anything, has no uh, share in that, and no, and nobody helped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that. Rather, He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Sing him singly did this and created it on his own. He created all of the creation. And and in particular here for this ayah, Khalaq as Samawati Wal Ard, he created the heavens and the earth. So then the Shaykh says, Is there anybody from the Mushrikeen, the idolaters and the polytheists and the atheists that reject this and say something opposite? And then he says he goes on to say that w does any of those people from the atheists and the polytheists, the idolaters, do they say that all, oh, you know, Allah did not create the heavens and the earth? And that somebody else created it, Ful Fulan created it. Or, or do they say, or oh, I created it myself? Or this particular idol from the idols created it? He says, he says that, uh, does anybody say this from, from, from old times to up until this day? Does anybody say this? He's saying as a, as a rhetorical question. And that even though that this, uh, this ayah of the Quran that we mentioned here, that the Sheikh is explaining to us, he says, even though that this ayah is recited day and night, and then the Sheikh says, and nobody, no person, nobody has 
uh, rejected and they can't reject it, reject um, or oppose this ever. So then the Sheikh, Sheikh continues and he says, Fi sitati ayyam. So we're still going through this ayah and the Sheikh is explaining it to us. He says, Fi sitati ayyam in six days. So the Sheikh says, Hadihi al makhluqat al ha'ila al adhima khalaqaha Allah fi sitati ayyam wa huwa qadir ala an yakhluqaha fi lahda. Walakin nahu khalaqaha fi sitati ayyam li hikmatin ya'lamuha Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sitatul ayyam awaluha yawmul ahad wa akhiruha yawmul jumu'ah. Fa fi yawmul jumu'ati takamul khalq. Wa lidhalika sara hadhal yawm a'adham ayyam al-usbu. Wa huwa sayyudul ayyam wa eidul usbu wa huwa afdulul ayyam. So then the shaykh says, he says, he quotes the part of the ayah fi sitati ayyam, he says in six days. Then he goes on to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created all of that that exists. He created the, the, the makhluqat. Um, this, he created the makhluqat, these makhluqat, these creations, these magnificent creations. Allah created them in six days. And even though Allah is all capable, you know, he, he could have made all of that in an instant. However, the shaykh says, but he created all of this in six days um, because of a wisdom. Because of a wisdom that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And then he says, the, these six days then, these six days, the first of these six days is in Arabic as they say, Yomul Ahad, which is Sunday. And the last of these days is Yomul Jum'ah, the Friday. So then the Shaykh says, so in Yomul Jum'ah, in, in, the, in the day of Jum'ah, all of the creation was completed. The Kamal al-Khalq. And so then the Shaykh says, and so for that reason, uh, uh, the greatest day, the greatest day of the week became Yomul Jum'ah. So the greatest day of the week became Yomul Jum'ah because of that. And then, and the Sheikh says, and that's an Eid for the Muslims, the Eid, the weekly Eid. It is Yomul Jumu'ah. And it is the best and most virtuous of days in the week. So then the Sheikh continues and he says to us, he says, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Khayra yawmin. And so we have a hadith corroborating that as well. So this is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's in uh, Muslim. It's in Abu Dawood. It's in At-Tirmidhi. It's in An-Nasai. Uh, and it's from the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu. Where he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the best of days that the sun rises, as in the, the best of the days, is the day of Jumu'ah, the Friday. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, he says, لِأَنَّهُ تَكَامَلَ فِيهِ خَلْقِ الْمَخْلُوقَاتِ وَخُلِكَ فِيهِ آدَمْ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ وَأُهْبِتَ مِنْهَا وَفِيهِ تَقُومُ السَّعَى كُلُّ ذَلِكَ فِي يَوْمُ الْجُمُعَةِ فَهُوَ أَفْضَلِ الْأَيَّامِ وَهُوَ آخِرَ أَيَّامِ الْخَلْقِ خَلْقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَدْ وَمَا فِيهِن So then the Shaykh, he says, he mentions benefits here for, for some of the reasoning that why that is the case as in Yomul Jumu'ah is the best day in the week. And, 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 and the Sheikh, he says, it is because all of the creation was completed. That Allah completed and finished with the creation and finished completing that task um, on Yomul Jumu'ah, on the Friday. And also Adam was created on a Friday. And he was entered into Jannah on a Friday, and he was and he was made to descend from Jannah on a Friday. And on a Friday, the hour will be established, the day of judgment, uh, and the hour will be established. And all of that is in Yomul Jumu'ah, in the day of Jumu'ah, the Friday. So therefore, it is the best of days, and it is the last of the day, or is the last of the days. Uh, 
uh, that the creation were created and the heavens and the earth, etc., were created in that day, as, as the Shaykh mentioned in the previous paragraphs. So then the Shaykh goes on to the other part of the ayah, then we're continuing. He says, So the Shaykh says, Harf, Harf watfin wa tartib. Ay, anastawahu, an, anistawahu, ala al-arsh jaa, ba'da khalq al-samawat wal-ard. لِأَنَّهُ مِنْ صِفَاتِ الْأَفْعَالِ الَّتِي يَفْعَلُهَا اللَّهُ مَتَاشَا So some grammar here. The Shaykh says, he says, he mentions the ayah, ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ Then he rose upon his arsh, his throne. The Shaykh says that it's um, the word thumma, it's like the word and. And thumma we use uh, in English, the, the uh, closest word to that is then, then. Uh, and it comes as an addition, yeah? That comes after something else being mentioned. It's a follow-on. And 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 tartib as well, so that there's an order, orderly fashion here. So what's been mentioned before is in order. It's in a sequence. One happens after the other. And the Shaykh says, for example, that that, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose upon his arsh and that was after he created the samawat wal then he, After he rose above his throne, once he had created the heavens and the earth. And then your Sheikh also mentions here that that this istiwa, this movement, this movement of rising, going up, that it's from the uh, Allah's uh, descriptions and attri attributes, what they say, sifat al-af'al in Arabic, which is um, a, a, an action, it's a movement. His attributes are related to his movements. Because there are attributes that are related to his that his essence as well, yeah. Um, and that Allah does whatever He wants when He whenever He wills. And then the Sheikh says, "Wa istiwa." What does istiwa actually mean? He says, "Irtafa wala." You know that you rise and you go high above. Right, you rise and and are high above. And he says, "What does al arsh mean?" He says, "Al arsh." He says, "Huwa saqful makhlukat." It is. The ceiling, it is the ceiling of the creation. It is the ceiling of it. The throne of Allah is the ceiling, the highest point of his creation, of all the things that are created. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, he says, وَهُوَ فِي اللُّغَةِ So he's going to explain to us from uh, the uh, linguistic point of view. He says, وَهُوَ فِي اللُّغَةِ السَّرِيرِ وَهُوَ سَرِيرِ ذُو قَوَائِمْ تَحْمِلُهُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ so then the Sheikh says, it is like um, uh, like a bed, you know, as as you would uh, think as a throne, for example, and it's it's like a bed that you sit on, uh, and then there's uh, like legs or uh, those things that are holding it up, and, and the malaika, the angels are holding the throne up, and it is the greatest. This is the important point. It is the greatest of the of all creation it is the most it's the greatest most magnificent of all creation of the Allah's created it's the greatest creation from the creation of Allah and it's it is the highest of the creation as well because remember it is the ceiling point of all creation so it's at the highest level as well of Allah's creations it's the highest level so then the Sheikh says Alistawa Alistiwa he says Sifatun bin Sifatillahi al كَمَا يَلِيكُ بِجَلَالِي سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَالَى لَيْسَ كَسْتِوَاءَ الْمَخْلُوقِ إِلَى الْمَخْلُوقِ وَلَيْسَ هُوَ بِحَاجَةٍ إِلَى الْعَرْشِ لِأَنَّهُ هُوَ الَّذِي يُمْسِكُ الْعَرْشَ وَغَيْرَهُ يُمْسِكُ الْعَرْشَ وَغَيْرَهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُمْسِكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ أَنْ تَزُولَ وَلَا إِنْ زَالَتَا إِنْ أَمْسَكَهُمَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ That's from Surah Fatir verse 41 we'll read the translation in a second so then the Sheikh says, what does Alistiwa mean? And uh, uh, we should pay attention to this because a lot of people make a lot of mistakes uh, and they're in grave error when it comes to understanding this properly. So the Sheikh says, Alistiwa, he says, it is an attribute from the attributes of Allah that are related to his movement. And it is, be and how Allah moves is befitting, is, is befitting to his majesty. We don't know. Uh, how he moves. We know he's told us, Allah's told us in the Quran as we are reading these ayahs here, that he rises and he moves up. 
but we don't know exactly how that happens. Allah hasn't told us, so we leave it there. We say uh, he rises and he, he he rises in a manner that befits his majesty. That's what Ahlul Sunnah believe. That's the right way. And then the Sheikh mentions he strikes the opposite example to that, just to help us understand. He says not like uh, a, a, not like any of the creation rises. We don't compare the creation like us and other, crea other creation. We don't compare them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not possible. And also to understand that Allah is in no need of that throne. Arsh. Why? Because he is the one who holds it. And other than it, he's in control of everything. And holds it and other than it. And, and the ayah that we just read. So if you look at the translation, it will help us understand as well. Inshallah. Let's have a look. So that is in Surah to Fatir, verse 41. So let's go there. Verily, Allah grasps the heavens and the earth, lest they move away from their places. And if they were to move away from their places, there is not one that could grasp them after him. Truly, he is ever most forbearing of forgiving. So that clarifies what the Shaykh has said clearly. Alhamdulillah. So it's quite important to understand that what the Shaykh has said there, because it's an important part of our belief, um, and to understand it according to uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, his companions, and whosoever follows them. And that's the right way. So then the Shaykh continues, and he says, um, he says, فَالْعَرْشُ مُحْتَاجِ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ لِأَنَّهُ مَخْلُوقٌ وَاللَّهُ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَرْشِ وَغَيْرِهِ لَكِنَّهُ اسْتَوَى عَلَيْهِ لِحِكْمَةٍ يَعْلَمُهَا سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى وَلِسْتِوَى نَوْءٌ مِنُ الْعُلُوْ لَكِنُّ الْعُلُوَّ صِفَةٌ صِفَةُ ذَاتٍ صِفَةُ ذَاتٍ وَأَمَّا الْإِسْتِوَى فَهُوَ صِفَةُ صِفَةُ فِعْلٍ يَفْعَلُهُ إِذَا شَاءَ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى يُغْشِي اللَّيْلَ النَّهَارَ يُغْشِي اللَّيْلَ بِالنَّهَارِ فَيُغْشِي النَّهَارَ بِاللَّيْلِ فَبَيْنَمَا تَرَوْنَ الْكَوْنَ مُضِيئًا فَإِذَا اللَّيْلِ يُغْتِيهِ فَيُصْبِحُ مُظْلِمًا So then the Shaykh says, he says the Arsh, that the Arsh is the throne, is in need of Allah. It is in need of Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? Because it's one of the creations of Allah and is in need of its creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah, he is not in need of his Arsh. His throne and he's not in need of anything else from the creation. He's not in need. He's free from all of that. He doesn't need a thing. He's self-sufficient. He doesn't need anything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, the Shaykh says, however, he rose upon, uh, he rose up and upon, uh, upon it, the throne, the, the arsh, he rose upon it. Because of a wisdom only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, as the Shaykh mentioned earlier. And he says, وَالِسْتِوَى نَوْءٌ مِنَ الْأُلُوءِ And he says, الْإِسْتِوَى, this الْإِسْتِوَى rising and going up is a type of being high, high up and high above everything. He says, however, he says, لَكِنُ الْعُلُوءُ صِفَةُ ذَاتِ So he says, that however, the ulu, the ulu itself, the word ulu is, is, is an attribute of his essence. As for alistiwa, that word, it is an attribute of his actions. As the Sheikh mentioned earlier. He, 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 he does this action whenever he wills, whenever he wills. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then, um, the Sheikh mentions an ayah from the Quran, Yukshi Layl and Nahar, that, uh, that Allah, he, he covers the, uh, the, he, the, the night covers the day. He makes a night cover the day, he makes a day cover the, the day cover the night. As in, you know, when you go from day to night and night to day, uh, the different phases. And the Shaykh just mentions that, uh, and, um, uh, and just explains that in a bit more detail, as in, you know, with regards to the day. So then the night comes and the night covers the day, and then when the day comes, then the day covers the night. So let's continue. So then the Shaykh, he says, وَاللَّيْلُ يُغَتِّي النَّهَارِ فَيُصْبِهُ مُضِيئًا يَطْلُبُهُ حَثِيثًا يأتي هذا بعد هذا مباشرة ولا يتأخر فإذا أدبر الليل جاء النهار وإذا أدبر النهار جاء الليل مباشرة 
لا يتأخر هذا عن هذا وهذا من كمال من من كمال قدرته سبحانه وتعالى لا لا يفتر هذا عن هذا والشمس هي الكوكب الذيم المعروف والقمر كذلك كوكب من الكواكب سبعة السيارة وكل منهما يجري ويدور على الأرض والأرض ثابتة مستقرة جعلها قرارا أي قارة ثابتة لمصالح الإباد والشمس وسائر الأفلاك تدور عليها لا كما يقول لا كما يقوله المتخرسون الآن من الذين يدعون المعرفة يقولون إن شمس ثابتة والأرض تدور عليها هذا عكس ما في القرآن وشمس تجري لمستقر لها ياسين شلاسين ياسين دوير الدعاية وهم يقولون الشمس ثابتة يا سبحان الله So then the Sheikh says, he goes on to explain, he says, so the night, it covers the day, and so, you know, and then, it, you know, and then it becomes daylight as well. So he says that that comes and then the other comes, meaning that the, the day follows the night and the night follows the day. There's no gap in between. And there's no delay in between this. As we mentioned, I think in the previous chapter, if you remember, in a different lesson. So there's no delay in between this. This is an order that Allah has put in place. The day comes and then it goes, the night comes. Then the night comes and it goes and then the day comes. And it's forever like this, without failure, without a gap or any kind of delay. And then the Sheikh mentions and that the moon and the sun, they are from the planets, uh, 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 of the planets that Allah has created. Um, uh, and likewise, he mentions that Allah created the earth, that, you know, there's, there'll be life upon it. For his servants and his slaves, for for the benefit of servants and the slave and slaves. Then he says, "Washams was sa'ir al aflaka." So this also says, and including the sun and the rest of the planets that basically move around it, move around the earth. And then the Sheikh make, makes an important point, and he says that, as he said, that the planets they move around the earth. It's not the earth moving around them, as he says, some scientists and, and those people who are astronomists, astronomers uh, um, say, but well, they've got that wrong. And the evidence is in the Quran, as we read, وَشَمْسُ تَجْرِي لِمُسْتَقَرٍ لَهَا And then the Sheikh mentions the ayah, which we'll just go to now and have a look at, inshallah. Uh, and so that's a common misconception. And even between the scientists themselves, if I'm not wrong, from what I can remember, Maybe the brothers can correct me if I got it wrong, but um, uh, where there's a divide as well in, 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 in this. But obviously we follow the Quran, is the word of Allah. But there's a divide amongst the scientists as well about, you know, what moves around what. Some of them believe that the earth moves around uh, the planets and they believe that the rest of the planets move around the earth. But alhamdulillah, we've got the evidence from the Quran. So if you go to Surah to, Yas Surah to Yasin, let's go there. And then we look at the ayah 30, 38. Let's go to 38, inshallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And the sun runs on its fixed course for a term appointed. That, uh, that is the decree of Almighty All-Knowing. So that is the sun, it moves. There's a sun that moves. The rest of the planets move. Yeah? Not the earth. So that's clear there from the eye of the Quran. So then the Sheikh says, وَهُمْ يَقُولُونَ الشَّمْسِ ثَابِتَ Ya subhanAllah. And then the Sheikh says that, that those scientists, those with, without clear knowledge, they say that, that the sun is fixed. So let's carry on. Then it says, one nujum. One nujum. So the Sheikh says, one nujum. Hiya al-kawakib musakharat bi amrihi. Musakharat fil, fil jarayani wa dawarani daiman. La, yaf, la yaftarna. وَهَذَا رَدٌ وَهَذَا رَدٌ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَعْبُدُونَ الشَّمْسِ وَالْقَمَرِ وَالْكَوَاكِبِ بِأَنَّهَا مُسَخَّرَةٌ بِأَمْرِ اللَّهِ مَأْمُورَةٌ اللَّهُ الَّذِي يَجْرِي اللَّهُ الَّذِي يَجْرِيهَا وَاللَّهُ الَّذِي يُوقِفُهَا إِذَا شَاءَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فَهِيَ مُسَخَّرَةٌ مُدَبِّرَةٌ لَيْسَ لَهَا مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٌ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٌ So then uh, the Sheikh he says والنجوم, the stars and he says there are planets, there are, like, are planets that are subservient 
under the command of Allah. They are subservient in the way they move, the way they turn and all these kinds of things. Always. And he says, and this is a rebuttal uh, to those who worship the sun, uh, the, the likes of the sun and the moon and the planets. Because all of these, they are subservient to the command of Allah. And they are commanded by Allah. They don't have anything of power or anything themselves. They are subservient to Allah. Allah, uh, you know, takes care of the way they move, makes them move and uh, their movements and everything. Allah controls them. Allah stops them, you know, whichever way he wants, whatever he wants to do with them. You know, Allah moves them. Allah is in control. They're under the uh, command of Allah. So therefore they are subservient to uh, to Allah. And they don't have, and any of these planets do not have anything from themselves. They can't move themselves. They can't turn themselves. They can't do anything. And that they are under the command of Allah. So then the Shaykh Qutri says, يَأْمُرُهَا سُبْحَانُهُ فَتَجْرِي وَالتَّدُورُ وَتُضِيءُ فِي أَمْرِهِ الْكَوْنِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى يَتَلِعُ هَذَا وَيَغْرِبُ هَذَا وَيَتَعَاقَبَانِ نَسَبَ الشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ وَالنُّجُومَ لِلْعَطْفِ لِأَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ مُنْصُوبُ لِأَنَّهُ مَفْعُولُ وَعَلَامَةُ النَّصَبِ الْكَسْرَى نِيَابَهُ نِيَابَةً عَنِ الْفَتْحِ فَتْحَى لِأَنَّهُ جَمْعُ مُعَنَّثِ سَالِمٍ والأرض معطوفة للسماوات منصوب بالفتحة ثم قال والشمس والقمر معطوفة للمنصوب والمعطوفة للمنصوب منصوب So there's some grammar at the end. Uh, we'll just go through that start of that paragraph. Then the Sheikh says that, uh, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He deals with the way they run, the way they move, the way they turn, everything is under the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, he he makes this one rise and come up, and he makes the other one descend and go away, and 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 he allows it to go back and forth like this. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is in control of all of these, the, the all the planets, including the sun, the moon, and the stars, etc. Then the Sheikh goes into some um, uh, grammar, which I won't explain here in English. It's quite difficult to explain, but we get the message, inshallah. So that's good. So then the Sheikh says, Musakharat. He says, Musakharatun. Mansuba lil hal, a hal kunha, Musakharat, wa lamatu nasab al kasra, niabu, and il fathati, li anahu, mulhak bi jemil munath salim. Kala, ala lahun khalku wal amr. So then the Sheikh, he mentions some more grammar, talking about the word Musakharat in the, in the ayah right at the start of the lesson. Musakharat, and we know what Musakharat means as when we mentioned, we read the ayah, subservient, that all of these, the, the, the stars, the moon, the sun, etc., these planets, they are subservient to Allah and His command. Then the Sheikh mentioned some grammar which we won't go into, but he does mention an ayah that we just read, and that is a part of the ayah that we, uh, that we, uh, that is doing the tafsir of. So towards the end, is of the ayah says Allah lahu al khalq wal amr and let's go to the uh, translation of that. So it says here he is the creation and commandment. Surely he, surely his is the creation and commandment. So surely his is the creation and command commandment al amr. And um, and then the sheikh breaks down all of this. So he says Allah. So the start of the ayah says Allah lahu al khalq wal amr. He says Allah. He says it is. Um, it's a word or a conjunction used to to catch our attention. So whenever you hear, whenever somebody knows Arabic, he hears Allah, it catches his attention because he's waiting for something to come next because he knows that what will come, what's going to be mentioned next is important. So it attracts his attention. Then the Sheikh mentions the next one. He says Al-Khalq. Al-Khalq. And he says, what does Al-Khalq mean? It means that was brought into existence, the creation. And Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought it into existence like us. He's brought us into existence and everything that's around us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought it into existence. Then, wal amr, which is the last word in, in, in that section of the ayah, wal amr. And he says, 
it says here, Amru subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is Allah's command. Al-Amr, I, Allah's command. Allah, the most highest command. And it's, uh, and it just mentions here that it's his uh, speech in, uh, uh, in terms of, um, uh, what, what we see in the universe, Al-Kawni, uh, 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 as they say, nature, for example, uh, what's in the world, what we can see, and also Shari, as in, in, in terms of legislation. So then the Sheikh breaks it down for us. He says, Amruhun Kawni, Alladhi ya'muru, ya'muru bihi al-makhluqat fatuti'uhu fasatastajib lahu mithlu qawlihi ta'ala faqala laha walil ardi um, فَقَالَ لَهَا وَلِلْأَرْضِ اِتِيَا طَوْعًا أَوْ كَرْهَا سورة فُصِّلَتْ بَاسْ 11 أَمْرُهُمَا سُبْحَانُ أَمْرَهُمَا سُبْحَانُ وَهَذَا أَمْ وَهَذَا أَمْرٌ كَوْنِيٌ أَمْرَ بِهِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ فَتَكُونَ أَوْ فَتَكَوْنَتْ إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ يَاسِين بَاسْ 82 هذا أمر كوني So then he explains uh, the Sheikh explains to us what the what the command is in terms of Kony, what we see that from the existence and, and around us, that the, the universe, for example, that was created around us. And then there's the Amr Shari, which is legislative, uh, the affair or command of, uh, of uh, that's related to the legislation, the Shara, Sharia or Shari. Yeah? So the first thing he mentions here, he mentioned the ayah. So let's, let's go to the ayah to help us understand what was being said. Surah to Fusilat. Uh, verse 11 so let's read that then he rose over towards the heaven when it was smoke and said it and said to it and to the earth come both of you willingly or unwillingly they both said we come willingly so that's in terms of Allah's command when he uh, commands uh, uh, what he's created as in what we mentioned earlier on where the sheikh mentioned that you know how Allah uh, commands and uh, commands uh, the sun and the earth and this is the planets to move and everything else that occurs, uh, and then that explains that to us in terms of what al Amrul Kony means. And then the Sheikh goes on to mention <clears throat> the Sheikh goes on to mention another ayah from Surah to Yasin. So let's go to ayah eighty-two from Surah to uh, Yasin, and let's see what's being said there. So then uh, the Sheikh quotes this ayah, he says, Verily, his command when he intends a thing is only that he says to it, Be, and it is. Again, Amr Kony, uh, about the universe bringing things into creation. Uh, Allah says, It is, and it, uh, he says, Be, and it is. Um, <clears throat> so then the Sheikh goes, he moves on to Al Amr al Shari now. now. <clears throat> and he says, Am al Amr al Shari, Fawa Wahyuhul Munazil al Ladi. يأمر به إباد إباده يأمرهم بإبادته يأمرهم بالصلاة يأمرهم بالزكاة يأمرهم ببر الوالدين هذا أمر شرعي يدخل يدخل فيه الأوامر والنواهي التي في القرآن الكريم وفي سنة النبوية هذا من أمر الله سبحانه وتعالى. So then he moves on to the 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 command the command or the command or the command the fact that's related to uh, the legislature. And that is the Sharia of Allah. Allah's, you know, the Islamic law, the law that Allah sent down. And the Sheikh says, for example, he goes, it is, uh, it is the Wahi that came down to us, the Quran. Yeah, for example, the, the, the revelation that came down to us. And he commands us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he commands his uh, slaves and his servants, he commands them that they worship him. He commands them with salah, with prayer. He commands them with zakat, obligatory charity, he commands them with uh, being good to parents, to the parents, bir uh, al Then the Sheikh says, uh, this is uh, the uh, the amruhu ashari, that this is the affair that's related to, or the command that's related to the legislature. Yeah? And obviously there's many other examples, he's given us a few here, there's many other examples of course as well, but he's given us a few just to help us understand what's being said. So, so this affair, he says, it, it enters upon commandments and prohibitions which, which are in the Qur'an al-Kareem and which are in the Sunnah of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is from the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's related to legislature. Yeah? So, inshallah, we nearly finished. We'll finish on the next page, inshallah. 
So where were we? So then the Shaykh, he says, um, إِذَا كَانَ لَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْأَمْرُ فَمَاذَا بَقِيَ لِغَيْرِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى So then the Shaykh says, so, so now that we know, and we already, and many of us already knew, but let's say now we know from what we've learned here with the evidences that Allah, for Allah is all the Amr, the affair is all with Allah. And for Allah, then the Shaykh says, then who, who else, then who, who else can have it? Nobody else can have it. Nobody else has any input. Allah controls and takes care of everything, as he, as he mentioned. So then he goes, he says, وَلِهَذَا يَقُولُ ابْنُ أُمَرْ لَمَّا قَرَأَ هَذِي الْآيَةِ قَالَ مَنْ لَهُ شَيْءٍ فَلْيَطْلُبُهُ وَدَلَّتْ الْآيَةَ عَلَى الْفَرْقِ بَيْنَ الْخَلْقِ وَالْأَمْرِ فَفِيهِ رَدٌ عَلَى مَنْ يَقُولُونَ بِخَلْقِ الْقُرْآنِ لِأَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ مِنْ الْأَمْرِ وَأَمْرُ اللَّهِ لَيْسَ مَخْلُوقًا لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ غَائِرَ بَيْنَ الْخَلْقِ وَبَيْنَ الْأَمْرِ فَجَاءَ لَهُمْ شَيْءٌ مُتَغَايِرٌ وَالْقُرْآنُ دَاخِلٌ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَهُوَ غَيْرُ مَخْلُوقٍ so this is another important point being mentioned by the Sheikh Hafizullah he says that that he says for that reason when Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma said that when he said uh, that when this ayah was revealed the one that the Sheikh is explaining in this lesson he says for if some whoever has a thing or is one has a thing it's because he requested it it's being requested yatlubuhu and then the Sheikh says that this ayah it, it shows us and it proves to us and it shows us and demonstrates to us the difference between the creation and, and the, uh, the command and the affair in it and it also shows us as well and demonstrates to us uh, um, the uh, a rebuttal to those who say that the speech of Allah is created because there are people that say this they say that the, the kalam of Allah the speech of Allah is created, which obviously is wrong. Is wrong. And and then the Sheikh says, he says, because the Quran is from the Amr, Al Amr. And he says, and and the Amr is the Amr is the command is the command of Allah. And the command of Allah is never created. It's uncreated. Right? And why? Because the explanation for that is the simple explanation, simple as you can put it, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from the his creation he's nothing like them he's nothing like them there's no comparison there's 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 nothing like them there's no comparison etc as in another ayah laysa kamathli shay wa huwa samiul basir that there's nothing unto him or like him and he is uh, uh samiul basir he's all seeing all hearing so then the Sheikh says, so therefore, that is why that, that these two things are, are different. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is different from his creation, free from his creation. There is no connection in terms of them. There's no comparing. And then the Sheikh says, and that's why the uh, Al-Quran, the, the, the Quran is within this as well. He says, and the Quran is, it enters into this as well, as in the Amr, Amrullah, the affair of Allah. And the command of Allah, فَهُوَ غَيْرُ وَخْلُوقٍ And is not created. That the Qur'an, the speech of Allah is uncreated. Because it is an attribute of Allah. And anything, any of Allah's attributes, they are uncreated because they are Allah's attributes and characteristics. So whoever says that the Qur'an is created, has committed kufr, has committed disbelief leaves the fold of Islam, whoever says this. So then <clears throat> the Shaykh, he continues and he says, وَهَذَا مَا خَصِمَ بِهِ الْإِمَامْ أَحْمَدُ الْجَهْمِيَّةِ لَمَّا طَلَبُوا مِنْهُ أَنْ يَقُولَ بِخَلْقِ الْقُرْآنِ قَالَ هَلِ الْقُرْآنِ مِنْ الْخَلْقِ أَوْ مِنِ الْأَمْرِ قَالُوا الْقُرْآنِ مِنْ الْأَمْرِ قَالَ الْأَمْرِ غَيْرَ مَخْلُوقَ اللَّهُ غَيْرَ بَيْنَ وَبَيْنَ كلام وأما الخلق فهو إيجاد وتكوين يوجد فرق بينهما. so this is like at the time of Imam Ahmad رحمه الله that when the Jahmiya 
these people, group of people, Jahmiya, people of rhetoric, uh, and we find them, even some of their speech today, with some of the people being confused and using their intellect uh, without actually looking at the texts and the Quran and the Hadith and the way of the companions. Rather, they just use their, try to use their brain only without any evidence and they come to this uh, dangerous conclusion as these Jahmiya did at the time of uh, uh, time of Imam Ahmad uh, Rahmahullah, may Allah have mercy upon him but when they so then the Sheikh says when they said and they they they, they claimed they claimed that the Quran is is a, is a creation of Allah is from the creations of Allah and then uh, then they were asked then it was asked it was asked is the Quran from the creation or is it from the Amr the command the affair and then they said that the Quran is from the Amr from the Amr Al Amr and then he said Al Amr Ghair Makhluk so then Imam Ahmad said Al Amr is 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 Ghair Makhluk is not created and then he said that Allah is free and different and free from his creation and nothing like them unto them as as we mentioned some of the evidences earlier so therefore that you know it says here فجعل الخلق شيئا والأمر شيئا آخر so that obviously the the uh, the خلق was something the creation is something separate and the أمر is something separate of course as as we know and and الأمر is a, is kalam so this command or this affair is speech as for the Sheikh says as for خلق the creation it is something that's brought into existence it's you know brought into existence is a creation and there is a difference between the two what we're talking about. So the takeaway point there, just to, just to summarize quickly in a sentence, is that <clears throat> the kalam of Allah, the Quran, it is the speech of Allah. It's the, and it's uncreated because the speech of Allah, when Allah talks, it's his, it's his, it is His uh, attribute and nothing of Allah is created. Allah is uncreated. We are the human, the jinns, and everything else that's around us here is created. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uncreated. That's the takeaway point. <clears throat> then the Shaykh continues. We'll just finish at the end of this page here. <clears throat> he says, Tabarak Allah, ay, ta'adhum alladhi hadhi afalu subhanahu wa ta'ala wa hadhi qudratu wa hadhi makhluqat tabarak wa ta'ala. Then, where is Tabarak Allah? And he, what does that mean? He says, i.e., you know, the greatness, the greatness of 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 his of his action, Subhanahu wa Taala, and his ability is all capable, and 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 that all of this that is created from from his creation, Tabarak wa Taala, that what is created, and then he goes and says, what Tabarak fi'l khas bihi Subhanahu wa Taala yatluku ala ghairihi. So this is a, a very important point that Tabarak. As it tabarak Allah and tabarak, he says this is, is, a, is a verb that is specific to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's only to be applied to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not for anybody else. Nobody else can take that, that verb and say to themselves, they can't say tabaraka shaza, tabaraka wasim, or me astaghfirullah, can't say none of that. That's Allah, tabarak Allah. Tabaraka is for Allah. And then the uh, Sheikh says, for example, he says al baraka as in blessing, because it related to blessing. كثرت الخير ونماعه وبركات الله جل وعلا لا تتناهي. أما المخلوق فلا يقال له تبارك إنما يقال له مبارك. So, so that's why we say to Allah, Allah تبارك Allah. He's the one who gives the blessings and the blessings from Him never go away. However, us as in the humans, as in uh, one type of the creation of Allah, us humans for example, we say, oh, we might say, oh, He's مبارك. As in Mubarak, meaning blessed. Where did the blessing come from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is blessed, came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody else can bless it. Allah is the one who blesses. It originates from him, as what the shaykhs being, uh, made the point here. So this is Barakallah fihi wa ja'alu Mubarak. And as, as we say uh, to ourselves, Barakallah fiqh. Barakallah fiqh, as in Allah is the one who, Allah bless you. Allah, you don't say, oh, uh, Shazad bless Wasim, Wasim bless Allah. So, um, 
So then the Sheikh explains that and, and he concludes there. So I think will be a good stop, inshallah, to, uh, to uh, it'd be a good idea to stop there and then continue from where we left off here. So I'll make a note for next same time next week, inshallah, uh, page 117 um, here. So inshallah, we will uh, uh, reconvene uh, next week around the same time, inshallah. If there's any changes in time, I will let you brothers know. Barakallah fikum. And uh, don't forget, lesson tomorrow with Brother Wasim as well. You join his channel, inshallah. You get the notifications there. Barakallah fikum. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Wa astaghfiruka wa tubi ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.